in the shed today and uh, over the last I don't know, a little bit while I've been playing around soldering leads and posting up photos I get people say to me that they don't know how to bit odd given that that's probably one of the main things that you do while doing this stuff is solder leads so today guess what I want to show you how to solder a lead one coax connector one lead and we're going to be completely ad lib and uh, no practice no nothing so I dare say there's going to be mistakes um, alright so the first thing you need to do is strip so we strip the cable is probably not the correct way this is how I do it I've been doing it this way for years so you've probably got your own way of doing it you can get tools such as this for thinner coax or better coax and these are quite handy if you've got RG58 or the like but however for this cable this is how we do it you'll notice the camera's moving around that's Kel behind the camera and uh, he's um, giving me a hand today because I didn't think I could do this with a tripod. So anyway, like I said, this is how we're stripping the cable back. Again, this is RG213 cable. You all should know that. And you should all be very, very well aware of that. So anyway, uh, as you'll notice, I'm in a, in a shed. I don't have, for those that are, that are long time followers and know me, I don't have the shack anymore, so the surroundings aren't nearly as luxurious as they once were. Again, pick out a bit of the braid. Everybody's got their own way of doing this. Some use a screwdriver, some use a pair of tweezers, some use a skewer, some use a toothpick. Anyway, if you've got your own way of doing it, that's cool. Maybe you can tell me. Anyway, next bit. We get a bit of, we cut a bit of this garbage, it goes away because we don't really need it. Some keep it, but I find that it just makes it harder, harder to deal with it. So we cut a bit away, give him a bit of a haircut. Excuse the wind if you're getting wind noise as well. It's really, 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 really windy here today. And as I said, I'm out in the shed today, so it makes it hard. At this point, I like to put a bit of heat shrink tubing. Hopefully, Kel's getting that heat shrink tubing onto the uh, onto the coax gives a little bit of protection. So I'll put a little bit of that on. Tip the wires from the wires to the wires, whatever. What we do, we don't forget the collar. How many times have I done it and forgot it? Millions. Anyway, learn the lesson from me. So, next bit is we get, again, everybody's got their own way of doing this. You know, maybe you've got a better way of doing this. Maybe you can share. I'm always happy to learn. Maybe you've got a little tip that you use or a little trick or whatever. Anyhow, I know I've got a lot of very experienced people that, uh, Watch, watch and follow so like I said maybe you've got your own way of doing this and maybe you can um, you can share and, uh, and give us some insight anyway make sure that this stuff here is uh, is really 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 tight on there not any hanging out make sure you've got no cable hairs in here so you don't want this stuff here hopefully Kel's catching this this stuff here touching this because that's what happens when you get that that that's a short and trust me your radio files don't like that nor does your receive now just to make things off a little bit i do this now we tin oh we tin the coax some people use a oh geez you call them many things vices helping hands i don't know whatever but um i don't I don't actually have a set. I, I really should get a set. Maybe if somebody wants to throw me a set, they can. But at this point, I don't have a set. And like I said, this is this is the way I do it. If you've got your own way, let us know. So, here we go. Just 
just trim him off again. Probably don't need to, but I do because I'm pedantic when it comes to having cables. Uh, uh, wrong one. What did I do with that one? Here we go. Here it is. Right. Turn him on there. You can see, uh, you probably missed that. You can see, you might be able to see in there, there's a couple of little hairs. So just quickly, quickly rip him off. Turn him off. Make sure he goes little hairs out of the way. Give him a bit of a twist down there so it's all good. You usually see that that's okay. So turn him on again. Now some people, I've seen, and this was a bit of an old school thing that used to happen, is that people used to solder through this gap here in the belief that it actually helped your ground. Now, I've got to tell you that I've never done it. I don't plan on doing it. And uh, I, may, I find that it makes absolutely no difference at all. So, but some people do. So that's a, you know, you might see, you might see uh, others that, um, that have done that in the past or or what have you. I've got some bit pedantic when it comes to bits of hairs of cable and stuff lying around. Just clean it up a little bit. All right. Then we solder it. Thankfully it's only a metre patch lead that I'm doing at the moment. Otherwise I'll be doing a little bit of gym move here. Again, excuse me with the mess that you can probably see in the camera because I'm in the shed and I haven't got the facilities that I once had. So there's a bit of mess around the joint. Whoops. There you go, there's a mistake for you. Mr. Solder. Uh, let a bit of solder go in there. Alright, hold him up, let him go in there. Alright, you'll see that that, whoop, that there is not a bad connection. Or not a bad solder job, rather. Now, I don't know anybody that can solder this and make it look perfect. So, as you can see, that's that's hanging over a little bit, and there's a few little burrs and what have you. So, I've got a trusty file, rasp, whatever you want to call it. Depends what end of the world you come from. I'll give him a little bit of a clean up. Just so there's no little dags hanging off, and just so things aren't too complicated. Right? And then, to make sure that it's going to fit, I get a little one of these that I've got lying around, and I've had lying around forever and a day, and make sure she fits. Like so. I know then that there's going to be a good connection in there, and I know that there's going to be a fit when it comes to plugging it in the back of my radio, or whatever it is that I'm doing. Give it a quick once over, make sure that it's all good. <clears throat> we put the heat shrink tubing up. Make sure she's good. Give it a blast of the heat gun. Again, remember folks, this is not practice, this is not rehearsed, nothing. So, I expect that there will be errors. I expect that there will be, everybody will go, oh no, it's, I don't do it that way, I do it my own way. So, that's good, let me know, please. Please comment constructively. Don't abuse me. I'll block you. But if you want to con comment constructively, please do. And what I'll do is I'll pause it. And I'll get Kel to pause it. And what we'll do is we'll come back. And I'll show you the finished product once I... Because I'm not going to show you how to do this again. Because it's pointless. It's exactly the same. But I'll do it. I'll pause it and do it. And uh, come back and show you the finished product. So Kel, pause it. And we'll come back. Right, so we're, uh, we're back again. And uh, after a quick pause, and by, as they say, the magic of television, we, uh, or YouTube, or Facebook, or wherever you're watching this, uh, we have two almost perfectly soldered, oh, well, perfectly, that might be an exaggeration, but uh, soldered ends, and a patch lead. And they can be used on whatever you like. SWR motor, not SWR, SWR, SWR is standing wave ratio, not SWR. 
but anyway, SWR meter, power meter, I don't know, tuner, whatever you like. But um, yeah, it's about a meter in length, about, give or take. So the other thing I do, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this one handed or not, but we'll try it, is do a quick continuity test. So this here, obviously is an average, everyday, cheapo multimeter. If you haven't got one, get one. So obviously that's good. You can hear by the boots. I love that. I don't really read the, the readings. Some people do, I don't. Yep, so I've got tip to tip. I've got shield to shield. Now the one we don't want is shield to tip. How about that? We haven't got shield to tip. Isn't that wonderful? Yep, so that's a perfectly operating hatch cable. Done in about five seconds. Well, not five seconds. Five minutes, ten minutes, whatever it took me to do it. Probably took me a bit longer because I was videoing it. But at the end of the day, that's how it is. And it's a lot better. So I find that if I I go and buy a patch cable with a molded plug, mass produced in a sweatshop, is that nine times out of ten, maybe that's a slight exaggeration, but a large percentage of the times, the shorts, there's dodgy connections. Uh, or any of the above. So I prefer to make my own patch cables when I can. I also prefer to make my own extension cables when I can. So as you can see, uh, if you uh, happen to need a, a patch cable or a, or a lead of some kind, by all means, jump on my website. You can buy one off me. I'll be more than happy to solder it for you. But uh, with the uh, with the applicable, applicable plugs, uh, as you can see, the plugs I use are, uh, are quite good. Well, fairly good for what they are. They're not the white ones. There's some um, some getting around that have got white center. They melt in about 22 seconds, and they're uh, they're pretty useless. But I use the, the brown ones. I only use brown ones. I don't think for for interest sakes and for those that are about to ask me and tell me, I don't think that's bakelite. I think that it's plastic. In fact, I'm I'm sure it's plastic. But still, it's got that uh, that bakelite look to it, and they are a better quality than the white ones. Uh, and, uh, and the coax I use just every day, 213 coax. Can't remember what brand it is. Could be Benelec, it could be, uh, it's not RFI, but anyway, whatever brand it is, uh, it's, that's what it is. But that's, uh, that's, in essence, how to solder and how to make a patch lead. So if you like this, like it, share it, spread it around. I might do a few more. Uh, I'm getting asked a few questions from time to time. And uh, as time persists, I might do a couple of YouTube videos about it. So anyway, there it is. Thanks, folks.